everyone, my name is Pixie, and this is part one of the advanced animation using sprites on a canvas. In part one, we'll take a look at organizing our character and creating collision detection sprites. Animating sprites in Appy Builder is done by showing different images over a period of time. For example, we have an image named girl1.png and girl2.png. The images look identical, but when you play them over and over, it looks like the girl is getting ready to cast a spell. We need to animate our character walking, so we'll need at least three different images facing in different directions. We'll also need to make sure our character can't walk on walls or tables, so we'll create collision detection boxes that we can place on our canvas to interact with our sprites. So let's get started. So if you don't know, there's this program called RPG Maker. It's basically software that lets you make your own RPG games. The reason why I'm showing you this is because I thought it would be neat to make an animation tutorial with the idea in mind of a 2D RPG. Think about a game like this. Your character walks around the tile map and their movement is animated. There might be animation when you interact with an object. There might be animation for a sprite that doesn't move. There's a lot going on. And I think something similar in this would make for a fun tutorial. Before we start on Design View, open up Photoshop or whatever image software that you're using and let's work on some pre-design elements. To save time, I'm actually just going to use some of the images from RPG Maker MV, but I'll need to manipulate some of the images. First, let's take a look at the playable character. In the RPG Maker series, the playable character is referred to as the actor. So I'm going to use that term to refer to the player that the user can control. A normal sprite sheet looks something like this. We have eight different characters on this particular sprite sheet. If you take a closer look at these sprites, you'll notice they follow a pattern. The top row for each character is facing forward, the second row is facing to the left, the third row is facing to the right, and in the fourth row we see their backside. And there are three images for each direction. Each image is slightly different, so when they're played in succession, it looks like they're walking. Each of these images is 48 pixels wide by 48 pixels tall. Normally when you're using a sprite sheet like this, you specify the coordinate that you want to display, but we're not able to do that in Appy Builder at this time. What we're gonna do is take one of these characters and save each of their directions as separate images. Open the sprite sheet in Photoshop, then create another document that is 48 pixels wide by 48 pixels tall. Start with the first image of your chosen character. Use the selection to outline the first image. Copy this selection and paste it into the empty document. By default, this should paste the image directly in the center. Then rename this layer F1. Go back to the sprite sheet, copy the second image on row one, and paste it on top of F1. So you should have two layers now, name the second layer F2. Go back to the sprite sheet, copy the third image on row one, and paste it on top of F2. Name this new layer F3. I'm gonna keep doing the same thing until I have 12 layers, one layer for each of the images. When you're finished, hide every single layer so you can't see anything, then show F1. Save this image as actor F1.png. We're using F to represent facing forward. Then hide F1, show F2, and save it as actor F2.png. Then hide F2 show F3 and save it as actor F3.png. Continue this pattern until you've saved all 12 images. When you're finished, your image names should look like this, where B represents back, F represents forward, L represents left, and R represents right. Now this next part is a little hard to explain, so I'm gonna show you in RPG Maker what we're trying to achieve. This is called a tile map. Each of these images here are known as tiles, and I can place a tile anywhere in these little squares. Anytime I move my cursor, you can see that that square has been highlighted. Each of these tiles has a coordinate. This tile is coordinate 00, 10, 20. This map size is 17 by 13. So what I'm gonna do is screenshot this and crop it in Photoshop. I've got my map cropped and the canvas size turned out to be 816 pixels wide by 624 pixels tall. Now obviously we want our actor to be able to walk on this map, but our actor shouldn't be able to walk on walls, tables, and we'll also say they can't pass through the cell doors. So if I were to color in the parts I don't want the actor to walk on, it would look something like this. That's not a lot of walking space, but let's go with it. Now there are a couple of ways to create this collision detection, but I'm gonna show you the easy way. The next images we'll create must be a square or rectangle shape. This is because there is built-in collision detection in Appy Builder, but it doesn't detect the shape of your image. It detects the width and height of your image. 
For example, if you have a star on a transparent background, then this image has a width and height of 100 pixels. It doesn't matter that the shape of the image is a star, the image dimensions will always be 100 pixels. So the collision detection in Appy Builder is detecting that 100 by 100 pixel image. The edges of the star are irrelevant. So what I'm going to do is create boxes all over this map. These boxes need to be accurate. I can basically create a box for this entire top area because every single tile in this box is something the actor shouldn't be able to walk on. And I'm just going to keep doing this until I've created enough square and rectangle shaped boxes. Each box should be on its own layer. Now we need to specify where the collision detection should appear on the map. I'm going to refer to the collision detection images as blockade images, essentially anything that blocks the player from moving forward. I'm using a separate layer to help me out here. Notice this layer contains two different colored boxes. Each box is 48 by 48 pixels, just like the tile map in RPG Maker. And I have another layer that lists the coordinates. I'm going to rename each blockade to reflect its coordinates. So the first one should be obvious. This image coordinate is 0, 0. The red portion is going to be our image. The top left corner represents the image coordinates. So in this case, x equals 0, y also equals 0. Hide that layer and show the next layer. This image starts at x equals 6, y equals 4, so I'll rename this layer 6, 4. Hide layer 6, 4 and show the next layer. This image starts at x equals 3, y equals 7, so I'll rename this layer 3, 7. Hide 3, 7 and show the next layer. These eight blockade sections are going to be saved as individual images, just like we did with the actor images. But take a look at the last two images. They are both the same size, 48 pixels by 48 pixels. I'm going to create one invisible image that is 48 by 48, and I can reuse that one image as many times as I need to. So basically, I'll have two image sprites on my canvas located in two different positions, but they'll share the same image. I don't need to duplicate that image twice. So we've created each blockade image. We've grabbed their coordinates, and we've colored them red just so we human beings can see them. Now we need to save these as individual images. Hide all of the blockade images and start with 0, 0. Press Ctrl A to select all, Ctrl C to copy, and then Ctrl N to open a new document. So what we've done is create a new document with the exact size of the selected blockade image. Do not paste the selection. By default, you should have a background layer. It might be locked. Just press the little lock icon to unlock this layer, then press the little I button to hide this layer. You should now have a transparent layer. Save this image as prison underscore zero underscore zero dot PNG. Move on to the next blockade image. So I'll control A, control C, control N, unlock this layer, hide this layer, and, and save it as prison underscore six underscore four dot PNG. I'm going to do the same thing for the remaining blockade images, but remember I don't need to repeat this pattern for the two blockade images that turned out to be the same size as our standard tile. For those blockade images, I'm going to use event.png. So let's take a look at the folder with our images so far. We've got 12 actor images, we have 8 large blockade images, and we have our event image. Now I'm going to add some more images to this folder that I've already worked on. I've added four arrow buttons. We'll use these button images to control our actor's movement. The actor can move up, down, left, or right. I've also added a wall decoration, so these three images will make it look like the flame is actually animating. And I've got a little NPC here. I'm just going to have him stand in place, but I figured I'd give him a little animation as well. So really, it'll kind of look like he's marching in place. Lastly, I've duplicated blockade 4, 5 and colored it red. I'm not going to use this image in the final build, but we will use it as a test image just to make sure the blockade is working because obviously we're not cats and we don't have superpowers, we can't see invisible images. So time to wrap up part one. Keep in mind that I don't expect you guys to have RPG Maker, we're just using it as a visual reference in this tutorial. I don't expect you to have sprite sheets or anything and you'll be able to use the resources from this tutorial if you download the project from the Appy Builder community. Ideally, though, you'd want to substitute your own resources and use the concepts from this tutorial to edit your images. Also, the blockade images are a little bit over one kilobyte a piece, and I believe you're allotted 10 megabytes per Appy Builder project. There are ways to get around that limitation, and I'll link a tutorial from the Appy Builder community to help you out if you need to circumvent that restriction. 
You can also make the blockade images smaller. Rather than using a large square or rectangle shape, you can use a small rectangle shape that outlines the area you don't want your actor to cross. The downside to doing this would be that you need to be extremely meticulous with where you place that blockade image, and you'll need to grab the exact X and Y of the pixel in the top left corner. For example, this little red line is located at pixel coordinate X equals 91, Y equals 238. And that pixel coordinate is in relation to the canvas size, which is 816 by 624. You might remember me grabbing pixel coordinates in the image map tutorial. That would be the same concept. If you were to save this image, its file size would probably be around 150 bytes as opposed to 1.5 kilobytes. The downside to doing this is you'll need way more than eight blockade images, and you're gonna to need to be severely accurate with your pixel coordinates. Even if you wind up with 20 small, thin blockade images instead of eight large blockade images, you'll still save a lot of file size. So you might use three kilobytes for your blockade images versus nine kilobytes for your blockade images, but you'll need more sprites on your canvas and you'll need to use pixel coordinates instead of the tile coordinates. There are no limits to the amount of sprites that can be placed on a canvas, but keep in mind your device memory might slow down if you try to animate too many sprites on a canvas. These blockade images are static, which means they won't move and they don't need to be animated, so you probably won't need to worry about lag, but obviously you want to plan out what your map looks like, organize your sprites, and determine how many of your sprites will be animated. Check out the Appy Builder community where you can discuss projects you're working on, stay up to date on current topics, and access tutorials created by community members. Alrighty guys and gals, that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to thumbs up the video and have a great day, bye!